Shalom everyone, grace and peace be unto you. Welcome back to my channel. It is indeed a privilege to be here with you today. We're going to be having a discussion. We're going to be having a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Today we're going to be talking about the heart of the matter. All right, and we're going to go into Deuteronomy chapter 6, and we're going to read from verse um, 4 through 9. Last week, um, we look at the fact that God gave an instruction, a command to Israel not to fear as they prepare to enter into the promised land. Today, we're going to be talking about um, something very intimate. And I am sure that you will be blessed by what the Spirit of the Lord will bring to your heart today. Um, as I come on, I'm going to ask you to to share this video with your contacts and on your social media platform. The aim of this ministry, Living Waters Apostolic Healing Ministry, is to teach the word of truth, is to teach the word of righteousness, is to teach the undiluted word without compromising. Um, and so, I'm asking you please to help me to do this. I'm asking you to help me to share and uh, encourage your friends to subscribe and to like the channel so that this channel will grow to teach the word of truth. Can I share with you something that the Lord spoke to me about a while back about this ministry? He says, I'm to do this and I'm to do it for posterity. So it's not only for today, but, but but it is for a time to come because of this word, this, this channel is really to empower lives. This channel is to lead people back to truth, back to holiness, back to righteousness. What we are seeing happening right now in the body of Messiah, it's a very low place. It's at a very low place and a very sad place. And what is going to cause us to grow is the knowledge and the truth of the word of God. So thank you for helping me and welcome back to my channel. All right. And so we're going to be having a heart to heart talk today. And I want to read from you firstly from Deuteronomy chapter four. And it says, Hear, O Israel, Hashem, our God, Hashem is the one and only. You shall love Hashem, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your resources. And uh, these matters that I commanded you today shall be upon your heart. You shall teach them through, thoroughly to your children. You shall speak of them while you sit in your home, while you walk on the way, when you retire and when you arise. Bind them as a sign upon your arm and let them be ornaments between your eyes and write them on the doorpost of your house and upon your gates. This is the word of the Lord. I read a little thought um, this week and it says the Bible doesn't need to be rewritten. It needs to be reread. And uh, for that to happen, the Holy Spirit, we need the Holy Spirit intervention in helping us to, under, to get a better understanding of what the scripture is actually saying to us. So let us begin our session. We love to talk about God as a covenant keeping God and the promise keeping God. But what does that really mean? What does that mean? Today we look at a little more on covenant and we'll see the direct impact it has on the heart, right? So from as far back as the book of Genesis, God has been making covenant with his people. The fundamental function of the covenant was to establish a community of interest. The fundamental function of the covenant was to establish a community of interest, right? So covenant implies community, oneness, togetherness, common views, and at its very core, right, of covenant, love forms the heart of the covenant relationship. 
love and gratitude were to infect all of life, all of humanity, our relationship with God and how we relate to others. So one very important thing we must always remember about covenant is that out of covenant comes relationship. As we go back in scripture, we see that it was God making a covenant between himself and Israel. And at all levels of the covenant, it was um, God and man. So we learn that when God constituted the binding contract covenant with Israel, in return for benefits and protection, Israel has a responsibility. They were expected to keep the many laws and commandments and that they came in agreement to. They said, everything that Hashem asked us to do, we will do. It sounds like a marriage vow, right? So um, behind every regulation in scripture is a principle of what our hearts should be like inwardly, which should result in a natural outflow of our attitude, of our behavior, of our conduct, of how we should look as the people of God. So God, God's word, as we read in Deuteronomy, which is the Torah, it teaches great truth about who. It teaches truth about God himself, and he is teaching truth to his people and he is showing them how to live so what um was god teaching what was he saying to them in this in the in the in the verses that we just read so the most important lesson to learn is that he is the true god of the universe and he is sovereign right in the ancient world um they believed in territorial gods they were they felt that these gods were responsible for the fortunes of the people who worship them, right? And, and that was one of the biggest problems God had with Israel because they continue to worship these gods that could not speak, they couldn't hear, they couldn't do anything for them. But the true God, the God of Israel, he challenged them in, in so many encounters he has with them. Israel that is and he made the covenant with them that they would obey his laws and not the other way around and it all happens because of relationship because of covenant so in Deuteronomy chapter 6 4 through 9 here Moses is reiterating the fact that should not escape this generation this new generation that was entering the land he says here O Israel, Hashem is our God, Hashem, the one and only. And I'm using Hashem because I'm reading from the Kumash, right? The sh and it is called, in Hebrew, it is called the Shema. And it is, it is said that it is the foundation of the faith of Israel. And so they would repeat this prayer every day, two times a day, morning and evening. Um, as we look at the passage, right, it calls for exclusive devotion and commitment to God alone. It should be a love that is expressed through our entire being and personality. It should be our daily lifestyle. So contrary to what many people believe, the scripture is teaching that it is love love from God, love from the heart of God, and not law that forms the relationship between the sovereign God and his people Israel. It is out of obedience comes relationship. So they understood that the relationship with God must always come first before they are able to obey anything else. You have to have knowledge of God. You must have an understanding of who he is, right? How can you make a commitment to one who you don't know? It, it's not possible. So 
so it, it is knowledge of God when we come into relationship, when we come to know him, it is at that point in time that our lives, our heart is going to be impacted and change is going to come forth. So as we review the layout of the commandments we see in Exodus chapter 20, it actually starts with God. It starts with acknowledge him, the very first commandment, acknowledging him as the God who took them out of Egypt, right? And so the first set of commandments points to our vertical relationship with God. And the other set speaks to our horizontal relationship, how we should live as a community and how that should impact our lives. So you may just ask, why is it applicable to me? Because God was actually speaking to Israel, right? That was for um, Israel in Bible time. But um, the word of God is unchanging, right? And uh, everything in scripture is written for our learning, in theology, we come upon texts that are what is called descriptive and prescriptive by nature. So descriptive texts, for example, describes process like what we see in the book of Leviticus, the process of animal sacrifices and stuff. But prescriptive, on the other hand, is instructive. And this is what we're seeing here. This is instructive text that is giving us instructions, right? The text we're looking at is as such because it prescribes certain behavior or a prescribed way of living. Why? Because we are not our own, we are under the kingship of the sovereign God of Israel. And so the first instruction we look at, it says, Hear, O Israel, Hashem is our God. Hashem is the only one. He is the one and only. The Hebrew word we just mentioned is Shama, which speaks to hear. And in the Hebrew language, it, it's very fantastic, right? Um, descriptive and action based so here in this context is not merely sound waves passing through your ear here in this context means to listen to pay attention to obey and to act that's it it's more than just going through one ear to the other and passing through from one ear to the other we are called, it is a call to listen, to pay attention, to, be, to obey and, that, and to act. And so now we understand why the Apostle Paul James, the Apostle Paul James teaches that we should not only be hearer of the word, but we should also be doer of the word, right? Hear and act upon what you hear. Hashem is one and only. I want to share a testimony with you, an experience I had when the Lord just when this when the Lord just called me to this ministry, and he, he called me to teach from the Jewish root of our faith, from the foundation of scripture. I remember I was so confused, not knowing what to do, really. How do I teach all this? It's my mandate. How do I do it? And I remember one night I went to bed and I said, Lord, you're going to have to teach me how to do this. And the following night, could have been the following night, as I slept, I heard the word Echad and I woke up. And I'm like, Eckard, what's that? So I took up my phone and I began to Google because I've never heard that word. And um, I'm spelling, I'm searching, couldn't find anything else really because I wasn't spelling the word properly. I was spelling this word with a K-E-C-K-A-D, Eckard, that's what I heard. And it was not until the following day I realized, as I was told by a dear sister of mine, that the word Eckard is a Hebrew word and she told me where to find it in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and to do the review. And it gave me an understanding. God is teaching me how to teach his people. He is teaching me that he is Echad. The Hebrew word for one is Echad. Echad means one. And God is revealing, revealing himself as Echad. He's, and Eckhart speaks to unity and oneness of God. God is one. He is all that he say he is, right? So while other nations around has multiple gods, Israel has one God, 
right? And it was for that reason God would have given them the instructions, distinguishing them from the other peoples of the nations, right? And so we love to quote a popular story. It's, it's, it's not just a story. It's an event in the Bible, right? And it is that of Elijah and the Baal worshippers among Carmel. Elijah was making a distinction. So where Elijah had, Elijah had to call for a spiritual identity contest, basically. He was distinguishing that there is only one God. And his simple question, the question was very simple. He asked, who is the true God? So Elijah, like many other prophets, they were the watchdog of Israel's conscience. And so anytime they fell, anytime they fell short of the Torah, the prophets would call them back to repentance. The prophets would call them back to faith, right? Calling them back to God, calling them back to their foundation, calling them to make um, teshuva, um, which is the Hebrew word for repentance. And so Elijah stood up to make the distinction. And so I would love to make the point that while we tend to get excited about the fact that Elijah stood up and he defended the God of Israel, he declared that um, there, there, it's only one God that they should worship. This, my friend, I believe should challenge our hearts today to stand up to defend, to proclaim, to make known to all that the God we serve is one. He is the God of Israel. He is a God. Therefore, we pray against even now every altar that is set up and um, everything that is anti-God, every teaching as a matter of fact that is anti-God. That's what Elijah was standing up for. He stood up for the God of Israel, right? And he is the one true God who deserved the praises of men. He deserved our worship. He deserved our life. And he deserved our all. Amen. That's God, the one and only God, the one true God. And so the next instruction we see, he says, you shall love Hashem your God with all your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your resources. You are to love Adonai with all your heart. It's, a, it's all about love. It's a matter of the heart. So love here is more than a sentiment or a bubbly feeling, right? From the Hebraic perspective, love is a duty, it's a responsibility, and it is a requirement. St. John chapter 14, 15, Yeshua says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, you do these things, right? So loving the Lord is more than saying, um, it's more than saying, I love you, Lord. It's more than that. It's more than an expression. It's more than what is coming out of your mouth. Because a lot of times we speak from our mouth and not from our hearts. Right? So the statement, you shall love the Lord your God, then becomes a statement of life. It's a statement of commitment to God. Consider this as a marriage vow and a marriage that is working. Consider this. It says it's a statement of life commitment to God and faithfulness to a relationship with him. Faithfulness to the covenant. Faithfulness to the agreement. Right? So love can only be demonstrated from God's perspective. It's not from your intellect. It's from the word of God. It's from God's perspective. He opened the plan. He know he showed the way. So the way we approach loving God is quite opposite of what God requires from us, right? The Bible teaches that we love God when we follow his commandments we love god when we obey last week we talk about fear not and i made the point it was it was it was more than an assurance it was actually a commandment that we don't fear 
right? For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. We safeguard his commandments. We protect them. And he says they are not burdensome. We read that in 1 John chapter 5, 2 to 4. So what commandments were um, Jesus referring to? All the commandments written in scripture. And he is saying that we are to obey them not in a legalistic way, not in a legalistic manner, as we see how the Pharisees operated. And he came to show us how to live above all of those things. Right? So our relationship with God is motivated or should be motivated by our actions. It has become our practice, you know, to talk about love without doing love. It's, it's a talk about love without showing love. It's talk about love when your neighbor next door to you needs your help and you're not reaching out to your neighbor. It's talking about love when there are so many persons who are in dire strait and need your support, but your heart is not there, right? So we do tend to love conveniently sometimes right and so it has also become the norm to praise god only when things are good right and that is what happened if we are if it is happening from an emotional point it is only when things are good we're gonna love him and praise him but when we know it the other way the way he teaches us even in difficult times we learn to love and praise him we want to check out the story of Job. Even in hard times, we learn to love and to praise him, right? So um, it should become our norm. It is our practice, right? To love sometimes out of feelings. So you feel. But we are taught now to love God. It is, it is more than our response and our action toward the object of our love. He is the object of our love. Who is he? And when we have that full understanding through revelation of his word to us, who he is, then we le learn to love him and we learn to fear him with all our hearts. You know, we are living in a world where the love of many walks cold. The Apostle Paul, um, he wrote about that. The many of love of many the love of many walks in cold because we we are not intimate to the word of god anymore we're not reading the word there is not not studying the word we you know get caught up in self and get caught up in the things of the world but god gave a reminder to israel he says remember these things and you are to do these things Right. So we see, for example, the commandments that you shall not murder, but people murder. Right. We mankind was created in the image and the likeness of God to live in harmony with God, to live in harmony with their fellow men. So when we allow God's commandments to grow in our heart, this same love will filter right? There's going to be an outflow of the heart into the lives of others. As we grow to love God, he's going to teach us how to love people. Even people, sometimes it is very difficult to love because the truth is, and we can agree, there are some persons who make it extremely difficult to be in fellowship with. Right? And so as we are called to hear and obey, as we are here, as we are called to love the Lord our God, we need to understand that our relationship with God, we do not earn our relationship. It is not by doing these things, our relationship we receive as a gift from God. Right? Um, we are saved by grace through faith as we come to believe in the Messiah. But importantly, the commandments and the instructions that are set forth, um, it, 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 it brings us into a closer relationship with him. And it is very important, people of God, that if we really want to experience God's favor upon our lives, um, we need to get in line, in sync with the word of God and what he's teaching us. And so another instruction we look at, he says, we're, we're, we're taught to love the Lord with all our heart. And he didn't leave it there. He said, these words are to be upon your heart. 
right? So it's not just loving him with all our hearts, but we are now to make a mark right? These words are to be upon your heart. And the understanding of the word heart in the text does not refer to the, the organ in the human body. It speaks to the intellect. It speaks to the will. It speaks to the seat of emotion where choices are made, where we make our choices. Make a mark upon your heart, right it means that our love for god should be wholehearted and 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 single-minded wholehearted and we should be single-minded in the process because the covenant is based on a relationship with god we too are instructed to come into this love walk is to come into this love arrangement right and he made the point he says you you, he says, these matters I command you today shall be upon your heart. You shall teach them thoroughly to your children and you shall speak of them while you sit in your home, while you walk on the way, when you retire and when you arise. He said, bind them as sign upon your arm and let them be ornaments between your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. Our society is very depraved, right? We are producing children who have no knowledge of God. We are producing children who doesn't know what it means to be a part of, a, 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 of, of spending time in devotion and in the word of God because even in many believers' home, there is no space for that. An altar is not yet set up, but it is a command for you today to obey these things and teach them to your children. Teach God's instructions and his laws to your children. And I want to challenge your heart today that if you were to do that, you are going to see, you will see the impact, the difference it is going to make on society in general. We're going to begin to produce less of what we are producing now because persons are going to live and walk with the word of God imprinted on their hearts. These words are supposed to be on your heart right and today if what we're seeing you know god is setting up he's talking about he we we function in a kingdom and he is the king of the kingdom but there are principles there are protocols there are guidelines that that the, the, the that the subjects of the kingdom must adhere to so today if he's your king as if he is your king, then you abide under his reign and under his authority. And so when we receive him as king, we are, we are enthroning him as our king, right? And we're committing our lives to him and we are functioning under his reign. He is the only king and he will not give his glory. He will not share his glory to another. These are powerful instructions that speaks to the heart of Israel. They are powerful instructions that is speaking to our hearts today. Let us hear what um, Yeshua the Messiah have to say on this text in St. Matthew chapter 12 from verse 28 to 31. Um, let me just, um, without reading it, right? Yeshua also confirms the importance of the scripture that we just read. Right. So here, it, this is a scenario. One of the religious leaders of the law of the law asked him, which was the greatest of the commandments of Moses? Right. And this is Yeshua's response. He said, the foremost is hear, O Israel. We just read that from Deuteronomy chapter six. He says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord our God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your understanding, and with all your strength. And I'm reading that from the NIV. But from the Kumash, it says, hear, O Israel, Hashem is our God. Hashem is the only one, and you shall love Hashem your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your resources. And he said, and the second is this, you are to love your neighbor as yourself. And we read about this instruction commandment in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. So, um, 
And he says, there is no commandment greater than these two, no other commandments greater than these two. Why did he single out these two commandments when there were about 613 commandments? Which, we right, there were about 613 commandments. Why single these two? Because all the commandments are built upon these two. It, about, it is about relationship with God, vertical relationship with God, and your horizontal relationship with your with your um, brother man, with the people you function with in a community, right? Um, what was he teaching us here, Yeshua? He's teaching that to love the Lord, right, is the greatest commandment because genuine love for God leads us to fulfill all the other. If we love him and if we keep his commandments, right, we will seek to please him in all we do. We will keep his commandments out of, out of a desire to demonstrate love for him, my God. If we would only get this, right? It is, it is your obedience that draws you to him, right? Look at the first line of his response. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and your strength and your mind, right? And we hear love. It is love. It is an inward affection. It is the matter of the heart. And there's a song that says, when you put your heart in it, it can take you anywhere. When you put your heart in it, when you come into obedience, when you come to walk in the fullness of the word of God, you can do mighty things. You can do exploit for God. You can share the world because you're making a distinction that you belong to him. You're making a distinction that he is the God, the only one who is a God. And this is a command that you hear and you obey. So the fact that, you know, as believers, sometimes people tend to feel as if there's some entitlement, right? Um... The fact that we are saved by the blood of Yeshua, we come to faith in him. It doesn't mean people that we have arrived at our eternal destiny. And it doesn't mean that our eternal destiny is secured upon that one act. We are called daily to walk out our salvation with fear and trembling. We are called daily to walk out our salvation to walk all God's instructions and to live that by them. We are called to a walk, the walk of obedience, right? And we all desire to be blessed by God, you know. Everybody wants to be blessed by God. But we are reminded again from the scripture that our blessings are hinged on our obedience. If you do, then you will be blessed. A lot of people have it to say that when you teach from this perspective, you are doing to save. That's not true. You are doing because of obedience, because we are saved by the grace of God. And it says when you do these things, it comes with a promise that things will go well with you. People of God, love for God is a lifestyle. That is what it should be. And when we practice the laws of God, Right? When we practice the laws of God, it leads us into righteousness. Because sin, as we understand, as is defined by scripture, not by your regular dictionary, is a breaking of God's law. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. And he says, if, if someone says, I love God and hate his brother he's a liar for the one who does not love his brother whom he has not seen cannot love god whom he has seen what what is that saying to us it is saying to us that first we must have that relationship with god we must come to experience in him we must have an a, an encounter that allows the circumcision of the heart that allows the cutting away of the fleshiness of our lives right? It is when we come into relationship with him, it is when we come into fellowship with him, he's going to teach us by means of his spirit how we learn to love others that are sometimes hard to love, right? So love for God, 
people of God, as we, as, as we listen to the word and as we are challenged by the word from the reading of um, the, um, the Torah portion read of this week, and I specifically um, choose these few verses from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Love for God can cost us our lives. And we have to be prepared for a lot of things. And so it calls us to sincerity of heart and mind. It's the heart. It's about the heart, right? You must love God even if he takes your life. Go back to the story of Job. I read this and I want to share it. It says, a commentator says that if you were to accept martyrdom, right? If you were to accept martyrdom, you should do so with the attitude that you are not a victim of human murder, but you have scaled the height of giving up your soul to God. That's what we are called to do. The singleness of heart. Yeshua said you have to leave all behind. You have to forsake all. If you want to be my disciple, if you want to be my Talmudim, you have to lay it all down to follow me. Today, I pray that you are blessed by this word. I pray that this word has challenged your heart a little bit. And I pray that the Ruach will begin a stirring in your heart. He will bring, he will cause life to come into you. And he will allow you to, to, to and give you the discernment you need to bring that evaluation to your heart and to see where you are at and i believe the spirit of the lord is going to lead you in a more intimate relationship as you come to walk in obedience to him thank you for listening and i pray that you will be blessed god bless you much and love you i love you thank you